Okay, so we're going to go here quick and talk about uh, does anything matter at all, right? And you might say, uh, that's a silly question. Why, why do we even need to talk about that? So uh, I'll get there. First, let me draw a quick uh, outline here. Okay, so uh, first we're going to start out with just me giving a little background about why this is even a question and why I think it's kind of interesting to talk about. Um, and then I'm going to talk through um, the best answer I've come up with so far. So I'm curious to see what other people think. Um, first, going to have to give a little backstory. Um, so this Pascal guy I'm going to talk about for a few minutes. And then I'm going to say uh, what I think is the best answer. Um, so that's where we're headed. Um, OK, so to start with, why is this an interesting question? right? Why do we care? And I would argue it's an interesting question because it's very possible that nothing matters. We do an experiment. Uh, we're in the desert. Bucket of dynamite, we got a nice wall, and then we got a, a button to explode it. Okay, so let's say we had a rock over here on the other side of the wall. Right? Just a, just a boring old rock. And um, I would propose, and I think most people would agree, that if I blow it up, right, it's not a big deal. But say, say we were to redo it with, um, I drew his legs too short, so I had to give him a box to stand on. Um, most people would say, and I would agree, that we shouldn't blow him up. Um, because people matter, right? There's something special about people. Um, we have some intrinsic worth that makes us different from a rock. Okay. But then the question is, right, what, what's so special about a person? Um, we're all just a collection of atoms, right? What's, it's, it's like a bunch of Legos. Does it really matter how you stick them together? It suddenly magically makes them um, more important or less important. Um, so you could say, well, a person you can talk to, a person can think, a person has feelings, right? Um, but we could put a dolphin up there too, right? And you could argue, well, a dolphin has feelings and can feel pain and can think and whatnot. Um, they can they even talk to each other, right? And most people would still say, well, you know, a dolphin's more special than a rock. It definitely doesn't get close to uh, a human um, because there's again there's something special about people, right? And it's not just that we can think or that we have feelings because dolphins do too. So it gets to be tricky stuff, right? What makes some collection of atoms more special than some other collection of atoms? And so that's why I think it's a reasonable thing to say it's it's possible that nothing matters, right? In the long run, the whole Earth. Right? Could just go poof. It wouldn't make any difference because um, nothing matters. It's all worthless. There's no meaning in existence at all. I hope that's not the case, but I'm saying that's possible. Okay. So uh, now we're going to talk really quick about a guy named Pascal. Right? So let's take um, first talk about just the idea of a wager in general, right, in, in logic or whatever. So let's say I come up to you on the street and I've got a briefcase, right? Let's say I come up to you and I say, hey, I've got this briefcase full of a million dollars, right? And I've got a coin, fair coin, right, 50-50 chance. And uh, I'm going to flip it if you want to play my game. I'll flip this coin and if it's heads, uh, you pay me a dollar. But if it's tails, I'll give you a um, million dollars. Right, okay. Uh, and your choice then is to, to say no thanks or sure, I'll, I'll play. And obviously the right answer is you should say yes. Because um, all you stand to lose is a dollar and what you stand to gain is a million dollars, right? So it makes sense, it's worth it. You can make it a little bit more formal. Right? So if it's heads, which is a 50-50% chance, 
Actually, I switched it up. I said tails originally, didn't I? I meant heads. If it's heads, um, then you would get a million, right? And if it's tails, you would lose a dollar. And if you multiply that by the probabilities of those things happening, you get, right, 500,000 minus 50 cents. And that's the net value of playing. And clearly, this is going to be a positive number, so I'm um, offering you free money. Basically, you should do it, right? Okay. And you could formalize it a little further even by drawing a little grid, right? And you could say, these are the four different possible outcomes here, right? Your choice is to play or not play, and the coin is going to land on either heads or tails, right? So there's four different scenarios that could develop out of this. Um, pretty straightforward, right? So if you play in its heads, you get a million. If you don't play in its heads, you don't get nothing, right? If you play in its tails, then you get negative a dollar. That's a one. Ha ha. And if you don't play in its tails, then you keep your dollar, right? You have no change of money. Your wallet doesn't come out of your pocket. Okay, pretty simple. And you can do the same thing. You can add through these columns and get the totals, which would be zero and 400,000 uh, 999 and 50 cents or whatever. Um, and the basic idea is you should make the choice that, that has the largest payoff. So Pascal dude, who was a mathematician and a philosopher and whatever else back in the day, um, applied the same idea to religion. He was talking about religion. We're going a little more broad with does anything matter, but he was saying does God exist, right? That sort of thing. And he did the same thing, right? So he drew the grid. Okay, right? So he made the um, same basic idea. There's a coin flip, right? Heads or tails. There's no way you can know until we die if God's real or not. Uh, otherwise, it's really tricky stuff to prove, right? Um, so that's akin to the coin flip. And there's two choices. We can, in, in Pascal's wager, be religious or don't be religious. So that would be going to church, uh, living by the Bible, uh, praying, that sort of thing, giving to the poor. Okay, and then he would do the same thing. He would go through and give payoffs to each of these cells, right? So, let's say for a second God does not exist, right? So, if you still were religious, so you went to church, you read the Bible, you prayed, such and such, um, Pascal says, okay, I'll grant you that you wasted a little time. Pascal's trying to convince you to be religious. He wants you to choose this, right? So he said, I'll grant you, you, you wasted a little time doing silly stuff that didn't really matter. And you could argue that it actually still is okay, right? Going to church, hanging out with friends, it's not all that bad. But I'd say for the sake of argument that it's a finite negative number, right? And by the same token, um, if you choose to not be religious, then... Um, you didn't lose anything, um, similar to not losing a dollar um, in our previous example. So, you know, no, no net difference. Okay. But, let's say, turns out God is real, right? The religious folks were right. Um, and you did go to church, and you did live by the Bible and all that. So presumably you go to heaven, right? So that's, like, positive infinity. There's... It's about as good as you can get. Okay. And if you're not religious, then uh, you don't go to heaven, so you could say that's some large negative number, like, you know, 9,000. You can maybe say it's negative infinity. Uh, up to you. The point is the same, right? If you add them down, um, this column is much better than this column. And so Pascal would say you should be religious. Not necessarily because you even believe in God, but because it's the best chance of getting the biggest payoff. Um, I, I think it's a little bit selfish. Like, that's, that shouldn't be why you're a religious person. Um, but the, the structure of the, the logic is um, cool. And, and also, you know, this is not necessarily a super convincing argument for why you should be religious, for a couple other reasons. But... Um, 
I like how he thinks. He's a smart guy. Okay, so we're finally getting to the last piece here, which is um, the argument that I think is, is the most convincing to me. And this relates to what we were talking about originally. Does anything matter at all, right? So before we were saying, you know, if we've got a person and a rock and a dolphin, say, right, we would say that there's something special Ah, where'd my yellow chalk go? Right? It's hard to say what it is. You know, we would potentially say, well, it's because humans have, have souls, right? There's something special about us. Um, that's, that's a lot of ways what a religion would say, right? An animal doesn't have a spirit in them, but a person does. Um, for whatever reason, there's something special. There's some intrinsic value to a person. A rock is useful too, right? If you wanted to um, build a nice retaining wall and you're doing some landscaping, you know, that rock would be nice. Um, but it's just a, an ends to a means. I said that backwards. Ah! Means to an end. It's not valuable in and of itself, right? Okay. And, you know, a dolphin has, has some specialness, but it, a lot of people, most people would say it's, it doesn't have the same intrinsic value as a person does, right? Okay. And it's possible, what we were saying in the beginning, is it's possible that nothing in the world has any value at all, right? And we could also put, right? So it's also possible that um, God exists, and then God obviously matters. He has intrinsic value. Um, he, God's not a means to an end. God is just inherently good and important and matters. Um, but it's also possible that um, that's not the case either, and, and nothing matters whatsoever, right? Hopefully that's not the case, but it's possible. So we're going to go back to the Pascal's wager thing. Now that's our coin flip. Not, you know, whether or not God exists, but whether there's any value anywhere, right? I don't care where it is. It could be uh, potatoes, right? Right? I, I don't know how that would work. Then our goal in life would be to grow as many potatoes as possible. Um, but regardless, our two options are A, nothing matters, right? Or B, something, there is something that matters. It doesn't have to be people, it doesn't have to be dolphins. Uh, it just is something. Something matters. There's some intrinsic, inherent worth out there in existence. And that's what we're making our wager off of. Okay. Okay, right? So then we can do the same thing. We can draw the grid. We can say there's two possibilities, right? Something matters. Something matters or nothing matters. You can guess where we're going with this. You have two options. You can live as if something matters, you can care, which would involve trying to figure out what it is that matters, right? Is it people? Is it dolphins? Is it potatoes? Right? This is a different discussion. You have to try to figure that out. Um, and then once you've got a good idea of that, you have to go and try to serve that. And um, Different discussion. But that's what this would entail, right? Um, or you don't care. You just go through life and you say, nothing matters. I don't care at all. Um, I'm going to do whatever I want, right? And the payoffs are pretty easy to think of, right? If it turns out that nothing matters, right, then it's easy because nothing mattered at all, zero either way. There's, there's no value anywhere, so it gets zeros. Okay, if it turns out something matters, whatever it, that thing is, something matters. You know, there's people, you could say, People don't actually matter, but there's, there's other folks on Pluto. There's Pluto people, and they actually matter. They've got souls. Um, that would still count. That would still put us in this column, right? Okay. So, if that's the case, and you care, right? So you try to find what matters, and maybe you happen upon these Pluto people, and you figure it out. You're like, ha, these are like God's chosen people. 
they really matter. We're just like um, dolphins too. We're, our job is to help these guys out. Um, regardless, whatever it turns out to be that matters, you try to serve it, you do your best. Hopefully that's some positive number. Because you did your best, you tried to help, right? And by the same token, if you don't care, right? You had an opportunity to help, but, um, but you didn't. And potentially you caused some harm because you're just doing whatever the heck you want, then maybe that's zero or some, you know, finite negative number. I don't know. I'm just making up numbers here. Okay. That's all I'm saying. So, obviously, just like the other ones, this is the column you should pick um, because it's got the biggest payoff when you add it through. So, it's not saying much, right? All you're saying is you should have hope. You should live assuming that something matters. Um, you should care um, because it makes sense. It's, it's stupid not to. It's, it's logical that you should do this. Um, and it's not saying much. It's not saying whether it's dolphins or people or Pluto people or potatoes that actually matter. But um, it's a place to start. And I think having this kind of baseline um, to work with is, is handy. So I think it can start getting to answering the question of does anything matter? I think the answer is we can't know, but we should live as if something did matter because it makes sense. For some bizarre reason, we're driving and you had to hit either a person or a dolphin. <laughs> it's over 9,000. <laughs>